Gentlemen, right now is Georgia Congressman Richard McCormick, a member of the House Foreign Affairs and Armed Services Committee. He introduced the resolution to censor to Labe. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Uh, first, give us your response to Congresswoman Tlaib uh, trying to defend herself on another network there. Yeah. Talk about misleading. She knew exactly what that meant when she posted it. She knew that was Hamas uh, speaking straight through their propaganda. She knew what it meant uh, from the very beginning. It meant to eliminate the state of Israel. There's no doubt about it. Uh, for her to try to mislead the public as to what it, it inferred and, and how it, it affects our policy is absolutely dishonest. She knew it was dishonest when she lied. When she lied about Israel attacking a hospital, she knew she'd already had the, the secret brief. She already knew that she, she'd heard President Biden talk about it. Uh, mm. She's the one who's misleading. That's a fact. So what are your thoughts on uh, the, the current state of affairs in Israel? The U.S. says that Israel has agreed to a pause in fighting in Gaza every day for four hours to allow citizens to leave. The U.S., meanwhile, targeted a Syrian weapons facility used by Iran. The strike led to more attacks from Iranian-backed militias, as there have now been 46 strikes on U.S. bases in the Middle East since Hamas's October 7th attack, Congressman. What should be done to, to uh, push back and retaliate for these 46 attacks on our military forces? Well, I'm, I'm an Afghan uh, veteran. I was uh, head of emergency medicine in Kandahar in uh, 2016. Every time that we were fired upon on our base, we immediately went after them. Uh, if you fire on American troops, you should be eliminated. It's that, it's that simple. I am so glad that that Syrian base uh, of, of operations was eliminated. I know that we had several Reapers and, and other uh, destruction raining down on those people. Not one person got away from the first base. I hope every time they fire on us, we eliminate the entire area uh, to make sure that it doesn't happen again. There are consequences to go in after our troops. Uh, I don't care where it is. Uh, you bring it on. If, it's, if you're going after American troops, we need to eliminate you. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing, right? I mean, we've been seeing this White House appease Iran from day one, uh, from when Joe Biden stepped into the Oval Office, by easing sanctions on Iran, uh, allowing Iran to generate billions in revenue for oil, empowering them to be able to support these terrorist, act, uh, terrorist groups, which, of course, have, uh, have attacked Israel. What should be the actual policy, and why isn't Joe Biden doing it? Uh, you're so right. He's doing everything wrong. He's gone soft. He's doing appeasement. It only leads to worse violence. This area of the world really understands strength. If we're not going to exude global leadership, there will be globalism. We have to make sure that we are strong, that we're decisive. That's what I loved about Reagan uh, when he went into Libya and went after not just their leadership, but their leadership's family. That sent a clear message that we're not messing around. Don't screw with the United States or there are serious consequences. When you go soft, when you provide them money, they will use it against you. When you use yeah. uh, weakness, it creates war. Uh, this area of the world absolutely understands strength. Uh, a lot of good people are just trying to make it to the next generation, but they are going to follow the strength also because they want to yeah. know that you're going to win. Well, the problem is this is the same team in the State Department uh, as the team under Obama. And Obama was uh, doing his apology tour. They're doing the same thing uh, in terms of the Iran policy that the Obama administration did. Uh, Sarah Bedford, jump in here. Hi, Congressman. You know, 22 Democrats joined with Republicans to vote for that censure against Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. But, you know, that still leaves, you know, um, hundreds of Democratic uh, Congress people who did not vote to censure Rashida Tlaib, who are sort of con condoning her comments. Do you think that Democratic leadership in Congress has done enough to sort of police some some, some sort of radical views um, among their ranks? No, I think it was weak. I, I, if you look at Jeffries and what he didn't do, uh, he didn't support his Jewish constituency. He didn't support the nation of Israel. He didn't support peace. We have an unprecedented amount of uh, anti-Semitism, anti-Israeli sentiment in the United States. Never in our lifetime, as a matter of fact, never in the United States history have you had hundreds of thousands of people protesting, including in New York, a city that has an inordinate amount of uh, Jewish population, uh, that they're talking of violence, they're talking about the elimination of a state, they're talking about elimination of a people. This has never been done in the United States history. This is why immigration policy is important. And if you don't think that the United States is inextricably related to Israel and its fate, 
You don't understand world politics. We are considered the big Satan. They're the little Satan. When they talk about eliminating Israel, you are talking about eliminating the United States. These people think along those lines. This is about our survival. This is about world war. We better take it seriously. Well, this is exactly the reason that we keep a spotlight on China. It's the same argument that it is about the U.S.'s elimination. China wants to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. And here, too, Joe Biden is soft on our number one adversary. But you just mentioned immigration, and I want to circle in on that because your fellow Georgia lawmaker, Marjorie Taylor Greene, has introduced an impeachment resolution against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The House will hold a straight vote on the matter next week. There will be no motion uh, to table. Congressman, will Mayorkas be impeached next week? I hope so. Uh, he hasn't done his job at all. I think it's uh, hilarious that they think they have anything, that they don't think that the border is a significant problem, even for their own party. Uh, there are certain things that unite us and divide the Democrats. This is something we should be absolutely laser focused on. This guy is putting the United States in jeopardy. 1.7 million getaways during a time where terrorists have openly talked about the destruction of the United States. To not take that seriously, to not do your job, you need to be out of there. We need to send a clear message that we're not putting up with people who don't do their job. But do you think you'll have the votes? Good question. I, the Democrats have a significant problem because they know that even in the most liberal sanctuary cities, we can't take it anymore. And the and that populace is pushing back on their on their governors and on their mayors. And for them to not support an impeachment puts them in a really bad position for the next election cycle. Well, we'll see. Congressman, I want to thank you so much for your service to our great country. Uh, on this Veterans Day, you should be honored and cherished, along with all of our veterans, our courageous men and women out there. It is the reason I'm wearing my father's army tags this morning. My late father was also uh, a great, courageous veteran. So thank you, sir. Hey, real quick, though, remember, it's the Marine Corps birthday before it's Veterans Day. Today is the Marine Corps' day. You're right. Happy birthday to the Marines. Once a Marine, always a Marine. Congressman, thank you so much.